You could see it as an experiment. What happens when the neoliberal ultras take over a government and get everything they want? The pound tanks, the economy collapses, everything goes to shit almost overnight. Welcome to Oligarch Island. Liz Truss is the oligarch's prime minister. She's a kind of Manchurian candidate put in place by these dark money lobby groups on behalf of oligarchs and corporations, most of whom are not domiciled in this country at all. She is working for global capital against the interests of this nation. These people are fake patriots. They are actually undermining the status of this nation. The short sellers, the hedge funders cleaning up, the oligarchs laughing all the way to the bank and everyone else pushed towards destitution. Absolute misery and chaos and collapse in a country that was one of the richest, most stable, most prosperous on earth, ripped apart by this neoliberal experiment. Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng are members of an extreme cult called neoliberalism. When this cult first started to be developed in the late 1930s, it was regarded as just crazy, completely fringe, marginal, no one paid it much attention. But then it started receiving serious money, money from some of the richest people on earth. And it started being championed by those rich people's media. They began to push it and push it and push it until eventually it became the water in which we swim, or to be more accurate, the sewage in which we drown. Neoliberalism became so much a part of our political lives that we no longer even recognize it as being a distinct thing. Neoliberalism has been the dominant ideology in this country for the past 40 years since Mrs. Thatcher came to power and Blair saw himself as inheriting Thatcher's mantle. He slightly modified some of its more extreme elements. You shrink the state, you transfer public services to the private sector, try to prevent trade unions from exercising power and you switch our perceptions of ourselves from being citizens to being consumers. The market must take precedence over politics, which means money takes precedence over democracy. And the people with the money, the oligarchs, the billionaires, are the people who are effectively put in charge. And while it's been this pervasive force in this country for 40 years, Truss and Kwa Teng are the most extreme advocates of neoliberalism that we've ever had in government. They've been schooled by the dark money neoliberal think tanks, organisations such as the Institute of Economic Affairs, the Adam Smith Institute, the Taxpayers Alliance, some of which go back to the very foundations of neoliberalism and were the organisations that were funded in the first instance by these immensely rich people and turned this from being a fringe cult to a mainstream political organisation. Both Truss and Kwarteng have been rigorously trained, particularly by the Institute of Economic Affairs, in this doctrine. And several of their crucial advisors, people like Ruth Porter, people like Matthew Sinclair, people like Caroline Elson, people like Alex Wild, they are straight out of these extremist so-called think tanks who refuse to reveal who's funding them. They're no longer lobbying government, they are the government. Now the thing about these so-called think tanks is they claim to be independent think tanks, just thinking about stuff, as if they're some kind of academic saying, so, hmm, yes, what's the best policy for this country? Let us objectively determine that. In reality, they are lobby groups acting on behalf of the oligarchs and the corporations who give them their money. And every so often there's a leak and we discover who's been paying them. Oh, it's the tobacco companies. Who would have guessed? It's the oil companies. Who would have guessed? It's some really, really nasty US billionaires. Who would have guessed? Could there perhaps be a connection between the people who fund them and the positions that they take? That the very rich should stop paying tax? That industry should stop being regulated? That trade unions should effectively be shut down? That protest movements should be shut down? They are just lobby groups on behalf of these organisations whose identity they won't reveal. But here's the astonishing thing. The BBC, in common with almost all the rest of the media, invites these people onto its current affairs programmes every single day. They populate Question Time, the Today programme, Newsnight, the whole lot. They're on there almost 24-7 without ever being challenged as to who's funding them 
and who they represent. So when we see the absolute financial, economic, social catastrophe that this extreme version of neoliberalism has just inflicted on this country, that catastrophe is not just on Truss and Quateng. It's also on those dark money think tanks. It's also on the BBC. It's also on the billionaire press, which has been championing these crazy ideas for so long. I think the most likely way this will pan out is that the massive economic crisis caused entirely by this government is going to put a huge squeeze on public finances. And then this government is going to say, oh, we can't afford to fund public services. Damn, we'll have to privatise the NHS. We'll have to do all the things they've always wanted to do. Destroy the administrative state. Privatise everything rip down public services, rip down public protections, and they'll be able to say, and this time they'll have a justification for it, there's no money, we can't afford it. And why is there no money? Because they squandered that money on giving it away to the richest people, on giving it away to the energy companies, on tanking the pound, on tanking our economy. I see this program as being as dangerous politically as it is economically and socially. For the 30 years following the Second World War, governments everywhere recognised that to prevent the resurgence of fascism, you had to ensure that people's needs were met. You had to ensure that people had economic security, that if they fell out of work, they wouldn't starve, they wouldn't become destitute. You had to ensure that there were good public services so that people's need for health, for education, for all the other things which make for a good life were there. And governments knew that if those things were in place, people would not succumb to the siren call of fascism. They would have too much to lose. They couldn't be conned so easily if they weren't desperate for a solution. And fascism plays on people's desperation. But then with the advance of neoliberalism and its adoption by Thatcher, by Reagan, and then by their many imitators around the world, that lesson was forgotten. And they ripped apart the social safety net. They ripped apart public services. And now that process is accelerating greatly. And the great danger when that happens is that the fascists come back and the fascists say, we're the new broom, we'll sort everything out, we'll sweep away the corruption, we'll solve these intractable problems. Of course, that's another lie because there is no fascist movement ever which has not been supported by the oligarchs, but it pretends otherwise. It pretends it's gonna save us from the very forces that have caused this mess, when actually it's an acceleration of those forces. The danger is that if you don't have real and workable alternatives to the disastrous program that this government is enforcing, then people are going to look around and they're going to turn to an anti-politics. And that anti-politics is most clearly represented by fascism. And this is why Labour has to step up. This is why Labour has to stop being this timid, restrained, tooth-sucking movement that it's become and actually introduce the radical proposals for changing our lives, for improving our lives, for ensuring we have the public services and the economic security that we need to ensure that it is seen as a genuine alternative to this government and not a slightly modified version of it. I think if you were to put your finger on the beating heart of neoliberalism, if indeed it has a heart, it's the denial of humanity. It's the denial of human relations. It's the denial of anything except buying and selling. There should be no empathy, no compassion, no altruism, no kindness. We should not care about other people. That does not reflect human nature. They're constantly trying to tell us, you are selfish, you are greedy. And sure, we've all got some selfishness and greed in us, but these are not our dominant characteristics. There's a huge body of research showing that our dominant characteristics are empathy and altruism and benevolence and kindness towards other people, a community, a family, our being together with other people and wanting them to have good lives as well as ourselves to have good lives. So we will not stand for this. We must not stand for this. We must gather in unprecedented numbers to defy this attempt by a weird extreme cult to impose their beliefs on us. This disaster is on the government, but it's also on the media big time. It was the media who gave a massive platform to these crazy neoliberal ultras who have tanked the economy and ripped 
the fabric of the nation apart. This is why we need outlets like Double Down News to tell us the things we're not hearing elsewhere. So please join Double Down News, contribute to Patreon to enable us to keep making these videos.